Okay, welcome to video uh, now five of Ajax and JavaScript. We're going to just jump right back where we left off, and we're going to look at traveled. Whenever they, whenever the player kicks the traveled or hits the travel button, what makes them actual travel without a refresh? Let's go to our back to our net map, and here's our traveled. If you notice, it's it's accepting. A variable which is that one through four that we sent um, this is all the same as before we're making sure that that whatever request your browser needs it's going to do it um, we're not going to get into to, to the four yet we're going to go straight down to when it does the open state and we're actually going to pull travel map so it's doing travel map and it's the query string this one I did a little different because I'm actually got a string that it's turning into but we're going to pass the player's name the direction that gets sent to it that one through four and then where the where the player is right now the player tag and if you notice that player tag is what we passed the last uh, Ajax request so let's go to our travel map and of course just like before we're gonna do our get method I will say this if you guys are gonna to do it this way with with having your you know you you guys gotta understand that you're gonna have these scripts this travel map and this get map on your server they can link it they can get directly to it from your just by typing it in the browser um, unless there's another way that I don't know about the best way to do it is you just put a code in here that says if code equals make it a 12 digit number then go ahead and do the code if not then just leave a blank page and the code can only be passed and the only way that the only and then let me let me actually go forward the code will be passed through this right here the code though you need to make sure so in other words I would just come over here and put code equals this and then it would check it don't actually put the code in here because people can see your JavaScript unless you've got it you know unless you've got it actually hidden or or scrambled make your code on the index.php and put the code in PHP so they can't see it it's server side they'll never see the code and so that way they, they can never access it I'm not gonna say this is the tightest security because I've never tested it um, I would assume that it would work pretty well. There may be other ways of doing it. Uh, maybe something I don't understand about Ajax that you can change. But if there is, and you guys know one, please post on there. But um, to get back where we were at, you're you're gonna pass, you're gonna get your, you're gonna get all the variables that you just passed. And with a lot of times with JavaScript and PHP, I run into when anytime you're trying to add two numbers, it it ends up uh, concatenating concatenating them instead of actually adding them. So uh, if you do the um, integer function right here first, it'll, it'll then it'll know that it's an integer and not a string, and it won't try to add them together the wrong way. So next thing we need to do is we need to set up, depending on what direction you're moving, is going to change whatever div tag your new div tag is. So if direction equals one, which is north, then it's going to say the player numbers equal player number minus thirty. Now the div tag has already been split and so in other words div let's say you're on div 60 it's div and then it's adding in 60 to it it's not actually div 60 so the reason why I had to do that was so that you would actually could minus and plus the div as a number and to kind of give you a better idea whatever div tag this is right here which we can look is uh, 64 so in order for him to be able to move north you have to know what div tag this is well there's this is there's 30 divs across each one of these so if we minus 30 then that's automatically going to move him north which would be 34 instead of 64 you move him south we're going to want to add 30 so that'd be 64 94 and so on east of course would only be plus one because it goes from 64 to 65 west would be minus one because it's going from 64 to 63 so when we actually look at our code you'll see that's what I've done if it's north it's minus 30 if it's um, east then it's plus one if it's uh, south or west it's minus one and then if it's south it's plus 30 so it's that's how it knows where to put you on your tag and then all it does is we come in here and we do a query or we update our table and remember when you start adding new zones you need to make sure to add make this a dynamic table right here too. set tag equals the new tag where the name equals the actual player name and that's how it goes through and updates you so when you move it moves now I'm sure some of you are wondering well what happens when another player moves how does it know then 
that's where the travel map comes in when the new player when let's say I move it's going to change my tag from 64 to 65 when travel map runs and Ajax goes in and calls that script it's going to see it's going to pull that table data and say 65 and then it's going to know to update the other player so that's kind of how it it works in a nutshell on that side of it <clears throat> So that's that's basically travel map. It's and and what it's doing is it's echoing out the new tag. So when we go back to netmap, after it finishes, we're doing going to do a set timeout travel. Now, because you what you want to do is you want to update where your player's at. So I set it on a half a second. It's going to go ahead and run the travel, so that way you get a fresh new state. And the reason why I did that is is it, it kind of every time you move you automatically get a new update it starts the kind of starts the three second cycle over and or the two second cycle whatever you said it is and it gives you a fresh screen but when we come back up here um, I've changed the player tag to whatever Ajax dot response text is so that way the player tag always stays whatever was echoed out um, and it, it, you could you know you can add more to that and have it you could, there's a lot of things you can do with that every time a player moves. You can, uh, if you, let's say that you wanted to make it stamina based, then you echo out the player's stamina minus how. Let's say you, let's say the player has 30 stamina and you want to make it five stamina every time a player moves. You make it minus five and then you, then you echo that out. That turns into this Ajax response text. Split it like I did above, and then you can actually make an inner HTML. His stamina change so that way every time he moves it changes, kind of like I did the lumber. We have a little bit of time to run through the lumber um, on this video. Whenever they click the lumber, now you remember we passed the counter and the tag, and that's what it's accepting here. The total lumber, I'm just creating a variable, total lumbering equals lumbering times two. Um, this is basically, I'm kind of giving it a how much ever lumber is, is, is in there. I'm doing just basically a random number saying to hit is total lumber um, times 100 and basically that's just creating a, a to hit number on, on lumbering I'm not gonna say to go with this because uh, it all depends on and, the, and and by the way the lumbering is the lumbering skill the player skill so it's just taking the player skill and times them by two then it's making a random number of, of 100 and adding your 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 uh, your lumber skill and then you have to beat the counter. Remember how I said that it, every time you, the way I was doing it before was every time that you make, every time you, you lumber, it takes away 30. So like when the, when the tree first starts out, it has 90. You just got to get, uh, or I'm sorry, I'm actually in reverse. It would actually start out at 30. You just have to get 30 or above. If you do it, you lumber it. Now, now it goes up to 60. The next person comes along, or even you, you have to get 60 or above. Then you have to get 90 or above, and then you can make it. If it hits a zero, it dies away. So if you, um, and I may be backwards on that, you just have to look into this. It's, um, but one, what, however way it works. If counter is greater than to hit, so yeah, that is the way it works. Um, if counter is greater than hit, then you're going, to, you're going to put in that action window one, which is that inner HTML lumbering tree equal, equals fail. You're going to do the inner HTML, the actual action window one. So it's just an array that I built to hold information, and what I'm what I'm going to do is, is I'm making the action window an array because you, you you can actually cycle the text that way the text can you know old text can stay there for a certain amount of time and then it can restart and then if if you get a success then it's going to do that inner HTML and that action text box one and then uh, goods equal lumber success there is a get goods function that you'll run that has goods and then tag and I'll show you that in the next video.